STV, your TV. The second ordinary session of the 2017 legislative year of both the upper and lower houses of parliament have been opened today, June 8th, in Yaoundé, with echoes of the National Day celebrations and the commission created to promote bilingualism and multiculturalism being at the center of the opening speeches. Plus, Aya Paul Abine, now former Advocate General at the Supreme Court, has been sent on retirement. Is one of the fallout during yesterday's Higher Judicial Council meeting at the Unity Palace with President Paul Bia. The resolutions and the stakes of his retirement will be yours in this newscast. Good evening to you all, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for joining me, Henry Wana, at the anchor in Yaoundé with the complete English newscast on Spectrum Television. Let's kick start this newscast from Yaoundé, whereby echoes of the 2017 National Day celebrations and the creation of the National Commission of Bilingualism and Multiculturalism dominated the opening speeches at the upper and lower houses of parliament as they begin meeting for the second ordinary session of the 2017 legislative year from today, June 8. Larinette Apaje was at the opening ceremony and now reports. The House Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Kavayege Jibril, has opened the second ordinary session of Parliament for the 2017 legislative year this June 8th with an expression of condolence to the Catholic Christian community for the loss of the Bishop of Bafia, His Lordship Benwambala. The echoes of the 45th anniversary of the National Day extensively constituted the speech of the House Speaker alongside praises for the creation of the National Commission on Bilingualism and Multiculturalism. It is not enough to say that we're a bilingual country. Everybody should make an effort to be bilingual. The country has given us opportunities to, to be bilingual because we train children. Right from the nursery school, you see them talking in French and English. It is not a joke. However, the content of Honorable Kavayege Jibril's opening speech did not seem satisfactory for some members of parliament. Uh, worried that um, uh, the speaker uh, didn't give me the impression of uh, being fully aware of the uh, magnitude of the Anglophone crisis uh, from his speech. He lacks uh, uh, profound judgment on it. The president of the Senate, Marcel Nyat Njifenji, has also opened the June session with highlights and appraisals of the 2017-20th May celebrations, the Bilingualism Commission headed by Senator Peter Mafani Mosonge, and the report on the Ezeka train derailment. The Higher Judi Judicial Council has come out with changes at the helm of some key institutions in the country. With the Justice Aya Paula Bine sent on retirement, there are new faces at the Supreme Court and the Special Criminal Court. Peter Sose reports. It is the biggest fallout of Wednesday's Higher Judicial Conclave checked by its president, Paul Bia, at the Unity Palace. Justice Aya Paula Bine, Advocate General at the Supreme Court, has been retired. Retirement meets him while on pre-trial detention, and though his age is no debating factor, the Constitution prescribes he could have benefited two additional years. Aya Paul Abine is replaced by Yab Abdul, who leaves the Special Criminal Court where he served as president for five years. He will be remembered for handling high-profile financial crime cases implicating some top regime barons. The vacuum left by Yab Abdul at the Special Criminal Court is now occupied by a fourth grade magistrate and lecturer at the Advanced School of Administration and Magistracy Enam. Emmanuel Njere, who was one time Secretary General at the Ministry of Communication, now heads the Special Criminal Court. He will be expected to speed up the treatment of files to make way for the trial of some alleged embezzlement suspects. Members of the judiciary who graduated from Enam were absorbed as courts across the country also witnessed cops. Seven disciplinary files were scrutinized. The decisions will be made known in the days ahead. 
Observers have indicated that the announcement of the retirement of the Advocate General at the Supreme Court, Justice Aya Paul Abine, may have a negative impact on the ongoing Anglophone crisis. Their argument in the only report by Larinetta Paje. The Presidential Decree No. 2017-276 of June 7, 2017, sent the Deputy Advocate General of the Supreme Court, Aya Paul Abine, on retirement. He has been replaced by Magistrate Niba George Amuncho Awa. Considering that the decision of President Paul Bia has been taken when Aya Paul is being interrogated at the National Gendarmerie on facts relating to social upheavals in the Northwest and Southwest regions, opinions have been raised on the impact of his retirement on the Anglophone crisis. Uh, the uh, Deputy Attorney General of the country, they call uh, Advocat General, has been put on retirement. Paul has reached a uh, retirement age, but the circumstances under which he's been put on retirement are a suspect. There are people in the, serving the magistracy in this country are those people who, which are, who are much more older than him. So why him? Uh, it's witch hunting. They just want to punish Honorable Aya Paul, uh, the uh, Advocate General, for the positions that he, have, he has as far as the problems of the country are concerned. Barista Emmanuel Sim says, the news can get some Anglophones more bitter and they might not welcome it since there are other magistrates who are far older than Ayapo and whom have been long due for retirement yet still serving. However, the mechanism used in Cameroon in deciding and effecting retirement has been blamed for the diverse opinions that have so far been raised concerning the retirement of Ayapo. Like in different sectors of the public service, many civil servants have attained retirement ages but still benefit from the comfort of their offices, salaries and other benefits that accompany their posts. Following the arrest and later release of Aya Aya Abine, son to the now former Advocate General at the Supreme Court, Justice Aya Po, many Cameroonians have been asking questions about where is it permitted and re restricted to take photos. Mumamanda went finding and now package the following report for us. It was the unexpected side development from the Agwabala Dr. Fontem trial. Justice Aya Paul Abime's son, Aya Aya Abime, was arrested and whisked off to the Ngosal Gendarmerie in Yaoundé. Even more intriguing is the reason for the arrest. Sources say his offense was taking pictures in front of the court. This has unsurprisingly given rise to a new debate where and when is public photography and filming permitted? While it is commonplace to find people using their phones to capture a moment at will, the action is not always in accordance with the law. The prise de vue uh, at n'importe quel endroit, no, c'est pas autorisé. Public filming at just any place is not authorized. There are places where one is not allowed to take pictures. Each sector has its own regulation. There is no specific law. The restrictions on where public photography is permissible is particularly severe if narrowed to sensitive spots, buildings or places. You cannot pictures in protected areas. You cannot film around Unity Palace as you wish. At the defense headquarters, it is the same situation. You are not allowed to take snapshots of arms or other military equipment. Inside a courtroom, it is equally not possible without the accord of the presiding judge. During a session, one is not allowed to make a recording. Lors d'une audience, vous ne pouvez même pas enregistrer les débats. While in shared areas, the limitations are less severe, the decisions of whether one's image can be captured is up to the person concerned. The photographer must thus request permission. Que ce soit d'un individu ou d'un milieu protégé, sans l'autorité. In public or private. You are not permitted to film an individual without their permission. Even when the deed is already done, laws still apply to the offender. In this case, he who films and publishes another's picture without permission. You can immediately go to court for an emergency hearing to prevent someone from publishing a photo he took without permission. If the picture has already been published, the person will pay for damages. The law on cyber criminality covers social media posts. Clicking off may be a matter of personal choice and freedom, but it definitely should not be at the expense of others. 
The action warrants forethought to minimize the risk of being caught in the law's net. Let's now talk economy. Officials from Africa's eight regional economy blocks are converging on Abuja, Nigeria to seek ways of reinforcing integration across the continent. It is coming within a context characterized by falling oil prices and insecurity rocking these economic communities. Peter Sose reports. Africa's eight regional economic communities are meeting in Abuja for a two-day strategic retreat. Senior officials from the Economic Community of West African States, Southern African Development Community, the Arab Maghreb Union, Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa, Community of Sahel Saharan States, East African Community, the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, and the Economic Community of Central African States will work out a roadmap that will enable regional economic communities to fulfill their mission of leveraging Africa's economic transformation, implement the first 10-year plan of Agenda 2063, and consolidate regional integration. It is holding at a time when the centrality of regional economic communities and capacity deficits within these economic blocks has stifled development efforts in most African countries. Regional economic communities are experiencing deficits in technical, planning, and political capacities. These, coupled with different levels of development, hampers a harmonized continental integration agenda. Central African countries, in particular, are experiencing a steady economic decline emanating from the fall in petroleum products and insecurity in some countries, a situation which calls for stricter fiscal measures the rationalization of budgetary choices and the strengthening of sub-regional ties. The Abuja rendezvous is the perfect venue for Central African states to share experiences and tap ideas for more viable economic blocks that will enable them to tackle the prevailing shocks. The African Capacity Building Foundation facilitating the exchanges will help the various economic blocks come out with a comprehensive strategic planning and capacity development program that will solidify synergies amongst them for continental integration. The percentage rates of project execution in the southwest region stands at 80. These statistics was reviewed recently in Boya during the launch of the third edition of the Public Investment Budget Stakeholders Forum of the southwest region. From Boya, Rindidis, Rindidis Ebune now reports. Some projects in Cameroon are either not delivered on time or poorly done due to some challenges. Reasons why this Public Investment Budget Stakeholders Forum of the Southwest Region comes with theme, financing and public contracts execution, role, challenges and perspectives. Bringing together stakeholders, this third edition of Public Investment Budget Stakeholders Forum of the Southwest Region has been launched by the Southwest Governor. According to the Southwest Regional Delegate of Public Contracts, there's been no execution rate because most of the works that have been taken they have not been executed because the complaints of lack of money, no financing, and maybe late payment of bills and all of that. Hence, this is what is expected from stakeholders. There should be a renewed confidence on the contractors so that they should not have any fear that if we work together, at least they can pre-finance works and they can be assured that the works will be paid. Though 80% execution of projects in the Southwest for 2017, during various presentations, challenges were mentioned amongst which is a late award of contracts, while others take contracts in regions which they are not used to the bad roads, consequently delaying work or reducing the quality. Municipal councillors of the Douala 4 municipality have adopted a sum of over 2 billion francs CFA to run council project. This was at a council session presided by Wuri SDO, Joseph Bertrand Marshall, who called on them to be more practical. Veronica Aji 
reports. Over the years, the Douala 4 area has been noted for its prime disorder, bad roads and insecurity. Inhabitants continue decrying theft, especially in markets. Cries which municipal authorities see are being looked into. The mayor of the Douala 4 Council reiterates his wish to change the lives of the people, noting Rome was not built in a day. For the 2016 budgetary year, focus would be on roads, for it is the pinnacle of development. During an ordinary council session aimed at adopting the 2016 budget, it was made known that construction projects have dealt a serious blow on the council's finances. A 40% loss has been recorded since the start of works on roads at the west entrance into the city of Douala. Some shops, which hitherto boosted council's coffers, have all been demolished with the advent of fight against urban disorder, an argument which the opposition does not approve. To other CPDM councillors, more is on the pipeline. At the end of the heated meeting, 22 councillors out of 30 present voted nine deliberations and adopted the sum of 2 billion, 83 million, 10,927 CFA francs as 2016 council budget. Ahead of the 27th edition of the Day of the African Child has been launched in the littoral region. The launching ceremony provided an opportunity for the officials present to call on all to fight for the rights and protection of the child as well as ensure the betterment of their well-being. John Paul Summer tells us more. While launching the activities of this year's Day of the African Child, the Regional Delegate for Social Affairs for the Littoral Region, Bisombi Helen, used this opportunity to remind those present that the African child is the future of humanity and thus deserves the right to be protected from all forms of violence which could compromise the physical as well as the moral well-being of the child. Just, uh, to precise that, everyone, everybody tried to help us to promote uh, the right of all the children and uh, after the end of the 16th of June, I expected that I will be present the achievement for all and uh, together have a good to better uh, answer, proper answer for the right of our children. The Cameroon government, through the Ministry of Social Affairs, driven by the vision of emergence and the valorization of young talents in Cameroon, the celebration of the Day of the African Child also provides an opportunity for a look at the level of progress on child protection against violence and the promotion of social inclusiveness for the development of the country. It was also highlighted that the social media is contributing immensely to the poor upbringing of youths today. Ahead of the commemoration of this day which comes up on the 16th of June, activities like educational talks, open door day, sports work amongst others will be carried out in the littoral region with the main aim of highlighting the importance of child protection. Still in line with preparatory activities to mark uh, this year's uh, International Day of the African Child, our reporter Marion Achango went finding out the challenges that an African child encounters on daily basis and fights in the following report. According to the common belief in Africa, the family is responsible for the upbringing of a child. But in some cases, this philosophy holds no grounds. Our father has already died since 2002. We are, we are just here to, to work a lot of jobs, to have more money to pay our school fees. Children who have no one to cater for them now turn to the streets with hawking being the only means of survival. Look at what I'm doing. I'm selling this child abuse. Okay. A person like me should not be selling this. Uh, if the country was, uh, let's say, developed, I have to sit to pay my school fees and that of my siblings. The African child, having been displaced from region of origin to another due to crisis, now suffers the effects of not going to school. I am not going to school because of strike in Bamenda. 
I wish to go to school, but I don't know how because there is no school in Bamenda. I have some difficulties since. As a uh, search of money like this to go to school, there is time when we don't we go to school without eating. Yes, we are also we are suffering. Eight days left, Cameroon and the world at large we commemorate International Day of the African Child under the theme Accelerating Protection, Empowerment and Equal Opportunities for the Children in Africa by 2030. Until then, the best is yet to come. Arab National Park say the rate of illegal activities such as poaching, encroachment for agriculture, and many others inside the protected areas has greatly affected the activities of the park negatively. They were speaking recently during a seminar that took place in Boya. Clarice Ekowe now reports from Boya. Created in 1986 by a presidential decree number 86-1283 of 1986, the Corrupt National Park harbors variety of flora and fauna species, such as 9,000 plant species, of which 217 to 305 are endangered, 923 species, of which 7 to 8 are equally endangered, 320 mammal species, with 160 endangered, 297 reptile species, and 613 fish species representing 20.2% of the national territory covered by parks. During the regional validation meeting for the revised management of business plans of the Corrupt National Park, the Deputy Mayor Motombi Mbome highlights the benefit of preserving one of the richest and oldest parks we have around. The importance of this park cannot be underestimated as it harbors different species of plants and animals. Also, worthy of note is the vow by representatives present to provide uniting support to ensure the protection of endangered species, which if care is not taken will face extinction in some years to come. Equally revealed during this session is Plan B, which is considered to be very essential in attaining set objectives of the corrupt national park. Yeah, this uh, validation workshop at the regional level is very important for the management, sustainable management of corrupt national park because uh, the management plan is a document, a technical document, which specifies all the activities that are going to be carried out in this park for the period of five years. At the end of the event, it was revealed that plans are on their way to change the name of the Corrupt National Park to the Corrupt Rainforest. Let's now talk sport, whereby ahead of the 2019 AFCON qualifier against the Atlas Lions of Morocco on Saturday, June 10, the indomitable Lions of Cameroon, who were present, who were camping in Equatorial Guinea, have ar arrived Cameroon in prelude to Saturday's clash. For an update, here comes the report of John Paul Sama. Following a couple of days of intense training in Malabo, Equatorial Guinea, the indomitable Lions of Cameroon are already in the country ahead of the opening game of the 2019 African Cup Nations qualifiers against Morocco. The Moroccan team, coached by Hev Renard, who have also been having their training session in Marrakech, are also in the country ahead of that encounter against the indomitable Lions of Cameroon at the Ahmad Wahijo Stadium, 3 p.m. Cameroon time on Saturday. Even though the African champions are taking part in the qualifiers, they have already booked their spot in the 2019 games by virtue of being the host nation. According to the head coach Hugo Bruce, he decided to carry his boys out of the country for training because he wanted to keep them off Cameroon media and friends as well as family members for them to concentrate on the upcoming games against the Atlas Lions of Morocco and have a cool head as they prepare to play the Confederations Cup, Russia. Sport News in a delayed day 17 game here in Douala. Union Sportive of Douala narrowly etched Leon Blessé 1 0. Meanwhile, in Yaoundé, Apeja Zonfu trashed Quarter Sport of Garwa 2 goals to 1 in a delayed day 16 encounter. Fimambale with the outcome of those games. It had to be an easy game on paper between mid table place Union of Douala and strugglers Leon Blessé from Fotoni. Seemingly, the scorching sun on the synthetic pitch did not favor the visitors who found it difficult to produce effective passes. Before they could come to terms with their difficulties, Union of Douala, with a trademark series combination, drew first blood.
the only goal that validated turned out to be the winning one for Union, who almost dropped points, if not of the men in black who ruled out what had to be the equalizer. Unfortunately for Young Blessé, the game ended 1-0 in favor of the host. Another delayed game saw local side Apeges Denfu defeating Kotonsport of Garwa by two goals to one in Yaoundé to tag what is considered the worst run of matches for the Cottonites. After losing at home to Al Ali by two goals to nothing and then to Zanako United 2-1 in Zambia, the series of defeats continues for Kotonsport, who will host Young Sports Academy in another delayed game come June 12 in Garwa. And it is with that sport report by Philemon Ballet that will place a cap on today's English primetime newscast on Spectrum Television. Thank you all for watching and see you tomorrow. God bless and bye-bye. TV, your TV.